Welcome to the Guide Exile. A new skill has been unleashed upon Rayclast, a skill that hits hard, a skill that burns, a skill that pairs very nicely with the one known only by his descriptor, Thick. This being I refer to is the Thick Jug, and he has a new skill added to his repertoire. That skill is Tectonic Slam. Tectonic Slam operates very similarly to Ground Slam and its base mechanics. You slam the ground and there is an area of effect in front of you. However, unlike Ground Slam, Tectonic Slam hits and spreads in varied random fissures. Although this can be avoided, as if you have endurance charges, they can be consumed by Tectonic Slam to ensure that it always creates the maximum number of fissures, as well as dealing 18% more damage. Along with this, it covers a massive area, so it would be in our best interest to ensure that we are always hitting whilst we have endurance charges up. And there is no better class for generating endurance charges than the Juggernaut. With this build, we will be going the two-handed critical staff route, providing us with respectable damage and a total of four main ways of generating endurance charges whilst in battle. So let us get into the meat of this thick tech jug. I started my 3.2 league launch with this build and it was very comfortable, albeit a bit difficult to transition to critical staves within the first day, as we rely on a Hegemony's era staff. But this did not stop me from dealing respectable damage with even a random rare mace and resolute technique all the way through maps. I have been able to farm up into red tier maps and uber lab without issue. As of this video, the gear that was used in my build is mediocre at best, due to it being my league starter, and it only has two 5 links. The path of building will have appropriately upgraded the gear and links. Offensively, we are making use of the newly introduced skill Tectonic Slam. As mentioned before, this skill slams the ground and expands into random fissures, but will expand into all of its fissures and deal 18% more damage if it consumes an endurance charge on use. So we will always want to try and have an endurance charge up while we are attacking. As for generating endurance charges, we get them from Enduring Cry, the Ascendancy node on Flinching, where we have a 30% chance to generate one on being hit, we generate one every second for 4 seconds upon being hit, and we have a 25% chance to generate our maximum endurance charges upon gaining an endurance charge from any method. On Yielding will give us a 25% chance to gain an endurance charge when we stun an enemy, which we do very often even without stun reductions as we hit so hard. And finally we have Smashing Strikes, which gives us a 10% chance to gain an endurance charge on a melee critical strike. With all of these methods, we are able to sustain in almost every scenario. To push this even further, we could make use of Aval's Devotion and Romero's Banquet setup, but this would mean we were cycling our power charges all the time. So I ended up making use of the Eye of Innocence for self-hit on igniting an enemy, which we can easily do as we are always critting, forcing the use of unflinching. Now beyond the main skill, we are going full fire conversion, getting Avatar Fire from the tree as well as Fire Penetration where we can. Herald of Ash and Flammability provide us with some more damage and utility. Finally, we are going crit and scaling much of our damage through critical strikes. Defensively, we are the Juggernaut. What more is there to say? With the Juggernaut, we gain an invaluable amount of physical mitigations through 7 endurance charges before any items, and regular armor, as well as arctic armor. The unbreakable ascendancy node, fortify, and arctic armor also provide us with more generic and elemental reductions. As an attack based marauder, we get a good amount of life regen and life leech. And finally, as we are staves, we get a fair amount of block chance that has saved my life many of times. As for playstyle, simply leap slam into a pack, cast your enduring cry if you have no endurance charges, and slam away. There's not much more to it, and it's great fun. The passive trees and path of building pace bin are included in the description. Some pros of the build. It's a very smooth and tanky juggernaut build, always a loved playstyle of mine. Tectonic Slam is quite large and has a satisfying hit to it. It's able to stun many enemies without any investment, giving you some more safety. It can do most all content, having pretty reliable damage and defense. Cons. It's not the highest damage of builds, so don't expect to be deleting high-end bosses. It requires maintaining endurance charges, but since we have so many methods for generating them, it's not that big a deal. It's not a super fast map clearing build, but hey, juggernauts are meant to be tanky and hard hitting. Our class and ascendancy for this build will be the Marauder Juggernaut as stated before. This class is an excellent option for keeping and generating endurance charges in almost any situation. As mentioned previously, Unflinching provides us with multiple ways of generating and maintaining endurance charges without even thinking about it. Unbreakable is an excellent defensive node, doubling our body armor value and a generic 5% reduced damage taken, which is very powerful, along with some nice life regeneration. Unyielding gives us some much needed AoE and other method for passively generating endurance charges. 
Finally, Undeniable allows us to make use of critical strikes with all of that flat accuracy and extra attack speed. For Ascendancy progression, I would follow this order. You can swap the last two Ascendancies based on when you transition to crit. We grab the following keystones in the passive tree. Avatar of Fire. This keystone fully converts our physical damage into fire damage for Tectonic Slam, allowing us to make proper use of elemental and penetration scalers. Iron Reflexes. This keystone can be picked up if you get a fair selection of evasion gear to add more armor to your thick jug. Here's the endgame passive tree. Defensively, we are picking up life, armor, and endurance charges. Offensively, we grab stave and generic two-handed nodes, along with some elemental damage. I would follow this progression into the final tree. For bandits, we will be helping Alira for the critical strike multiplier and resistances. You can also pick up resolute technique to level with until you transition to crit. Pantheons for the build include Soul of the Brine King. This can help you avoid chain stuns, however, I did not find myself getting stunned that often. Soul of Lunaris. This greatly helps with more physical mitigation and movement speed. Some minor nodes you can use are Soul of Gruthkull, which provides more physical mitigation since we're always getting hit, and Soul of Tukahama, which provides more physical mitigation and life regeneration if we go into face tank mode. Here are the following gem links for the build. Support gem links are shown in order of importance. Four links can go in the helmet, gloves, or boots, and six links can go into the weapon or body armor. Gems with a set level are either due to their effect not scaling with level, or requirement for cast one damage taken. This is our main 6 link. For bosses, you will want to swap increased area of effect for concentrated effect. If you are not making use of Eye of Innocence, you can swap added fire damage for elemental focus, as we will not care about ignites. Here is our support totem. I prefer to make use of Culling Strike for utility on bosses and lab farming. You may swap this to anything you'd like. You'll have to manually cast your Enduring Cry. Cast when damage taken will only cast spells and not war cries. For our helmet, I chose to use a Starkonjus head. This is a very cheap unique that provides a high amount of evasion, base life, and attack speed, as well as critical strike chance. It's also a commonly labyrinth enchanted helmet, making it easier to find your respective enchantment on. And as we take iron reflexes, all of this evasion will become armor. Here's some other unique options. For the abysses, this will add a lot of damage, but will make you very susceptible to physical damage. User beware, and only use if you know what you're doing. If you choose to use none of these, you may also make use of a rare helmet with some combination of the listed affixes. For helmet enchantment, you will want to look for the 40% chance for tectonic slam to not consume an endurance charge. This enchant will greatly assist in maintaining endurance charges on single target, but is not required. Since we are the Juggernaut and make use of Unbreakable, that doubles armor from our chest, it would behoove us to get a chest with a lot of armor. For this, one of the best options is the Brass Dome. However, that does not provide flat life resistances or other bonuses, so for our chest, I would recommend to first go with a rare chest with a lot of armor, more than 2,000 and a life. Here's some unique options for body armors. If you choose to use a comb's heart, you can just put your ancestral totem in another socket, just for the bonus and not really for its damage. Here is the affix priority for a body armor. For gloves, we can just make use of some well-rolled rare gloves with life, resistances, physical damage to attacks, and attack speed. If you want to use some uniques, here are some good options. Here is the affix priority for gloves. For boots, I choose to use rare boots with life, movement speed, and resistances. Here are some other unique options. If you're using Eye of Innocence, you could use Sun Spites to self-ignite to gain more damage. Here is the affix priority for boots. You can look for the following enchantments on boots. For the belt, we make use of the Belt of the Deceiver. 
This is a great all-around belt for increased physical damage, life, resistances, and intimidation to provide an effective 10% more multiplier to our damage. You can also look to get this corrupted with plus one endurance charges. If you choose to not use the belt of the deceiver, you want to get a rare belt mainly focusing on life, elemental resistances, and elemental damage to attacks. Now playing around with this build in many different setups, I ended up settling on using the unique amulet Eye of Innocence. This amulet is interesting for the Juggernaut, as when we get hit with unflinching, we have a chance to generate an endurance charge, as well as a guaranteed minimum of 4 charges over 4 seconds. With the Eye of Innocence, every time we crit and ignite an enemy, we will hit ourselves with 25 fire damage and proc unflinching on the Juggernaut. This makes for a great endurance charge generator for single target fights where either you cannot stun, make use of Enduring Cry, or you do not get hit frequently enough by the target. With this amulet, we can also make use of the Sunspite boots, shown earlier, to give us a chance to self-ignite, to gain increased damage, movement speed, and life regeneration from the boots and amulet. If you find that this amulet is unnecessary, you can instead go with a rare amulet with the following affix priority. I used a rare amulet almost all the way to 90 without too much issue. Here are some optional amulet uniques. Both of our rings will be rare, focusing on life, resistances, and stat requirements. Offensive affixes should be added if there is space. For our weapon, we will be using the Hegemony's Era Staff. This is one of the better and really only attack-based staves for physical crit builds that is unique. We get roughly 500 physical DPS, power charge generation, and an extra power charge, and some block chance. For our flask, we will be using the following. A wise oak. This is a very strong flask for single element penetration and is made even stronger if you manage to balance two or three elemental resistances. Lion's Roar. An excellent offensive and defensive choice providing more melee damage and knockback to help trigger out power generation. A diamond flask. This is used to bring our critical strike chance up. Silver flask. This will provide us with some more attack and movement speed. A life flask. This could be divine or eternal. You want to have a life flask rolled with increased recovery rate. As for jewels, I will provide the affix priority for both regular and abyss jewels. Leveling this build is very straightforward, but as always, there are many leveling uniques that make the experience much faster, easier, and more fun. As with all my other builds that are attack based, Elrion minus mana jewelry is very useful until you make use of a Thief's Torment, and without either of these, you will need a mana flask. For gem progression, I recommend the following. From here, you'll want to fill out the rest of your skill gems as listed in the guide. Make sure to be using an Enduring Cry for pre-stacking your Endurance Charges while you are leveling. Well, Exile, I hope that your big boy Jug appetite has been tided over for now. It's a very tough hunger to satisfy. This build was a pleasure to play, and I thoroughly enjoyed the new skill, Tectonic Slam. It brought me back to the days of the Thick Jug's long-lost brother, EQ Jug. Ah, those were the days. Anyhow, let me know what you think of the new skill, and if you've done something different with it. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one, Exile.